people get together on um, on on the internet and have discussion groups, and sometimes they're positive and sometimes they're negative. And I happen to fall come across one. It was November. It was November of about two years, three years ago, um, when one of the preachers on the internet discussed to the group. He wrote. I can even choose not to send Christmas cards. I can choose not to sing Christmas carols during the Advent. Then he added, any bets on when we get into the annual discussion on this list? The discussion started that very moment and continued through 57 messages, with subject changing from Advent introit to Advent Christmas rant to just rant continued. Some preachers ranted eloquently against the commercializing of Christmas, explaining that the the church had sold out to the secular culture. Others gave equal passionate defenses of Christmas carols during the Advent season, and that was the point of view that they shared. I, I shared with, with Jim earlier, of all, this, of all the churches that I've ever been, or that, I, that I've ever worshipped at, or been the pastor at, this is the first church that is very specific about you don't sing Christmas before Christmas. Other churches, we used to we used to dribble in every once in a while. We dribble in, you know, old little town of Bethlehem or 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 some songs. But uh, properly liturgical churches, Christmas carols are not sung until Christmas Eve. Advent songs are not the same as Christmas carols. One says one is supposed to sing. Come thou long, long expected Jesus, or lo, how a rose air blooming. But one is certainly not to sing Silent Night or Away in the Manger until the liturgical calendar recognizes that Jesus is actually born, which is on Christmas Eve. Now you're allowed to sing the traditional Christmas carols for two Sundays after Christmas, but it seems that the liturgical churches have mostly lost the battle because Christmas is celebrated earlier and earlier every year. Earlier and earlier, hey, I started listening to Christmas music uh, long before Thanksgiving. Thankful to Sirius XM that's got really great Christmas channels on it. To my wife's chagrin, huh? October, yes, yeah, she said I started listening in October. And if you come to my if you come to my office in I don't wait till July. Come to my office on January 24th, you're going to hear Christmas music playing because that's six months before Christmas. You just got to kick it out there, right? I mean, golly. So many years ago, I once attended a church that refused to sing Christmas songs until Christmas Eve, and I found it very difficult to get into the Christmas spirit. I see no harm in singing Christmas carols whenever you want to. But there is a certain value in the emphasis upon preparation found in liturgical churches. That is what Advent is about. One church I'm aware of actually stumbled itself into a proper advent. That's because they simply couldn't find all the pieces to the manger scene. When they were decorating, they couldn't find all the pieces. They, they had packed them away someplace. So, the first Sunday, there was only a bare manger. The next Sunday, there were shepherds and animals that appeared. And so it went until finally, the Christ child lay in the manger on Christmas Eve. They just kept finding the pieces and adding it to the manger. So usually here at our Redeemer, we follow the prescribed lectionary readings, especially looking forward to this time of year, except for this first Sunday in Advent in which there seems to be all this time, this apocalyptic theme, this dark theme. And it's really hard to get into Christmas spirit when you're talking about all this dark stuff. Now, we didn't have first... First, uh, last Sunday was our um, first Christmas, uh, first Sunday in Advent, and there was nothing dark about last Sunday. But the passages from that Sunday, from Isaiah, it has that kind of flavor. Isaiah is no longer a young man. He's an old man who has returned with his people from exile. They returned to a city in ruin. The temple in ruin and their lives in ruin. And it had been a long time since anyone had seen God do mighty works. So Isaiah pours out in his lament from last week, pleading God, tear the heavens once again. 
He's longing for God to act. Stand in the rubble of the lost temple, amid the ruins of the lost faith. He cries out for God to be visible instead of hidden. In the seventh verse of that reading, he, he says, For you have hidden your face from us. And earlier in verse 5, he says, Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. He was blaming God for what took place. But within that bleak passage from Isaiah is actually a great beginning for Advent season. Because it's filled with eagerness. It's filled with yearning. It's filled with longing. And isn't that where we are? Isn't that where we are? We can identify with these words. At least I suspect most of us can. Have you ever stood in ruin, amid the ruins of your faith and prayed? But felt like you were only talking to yourself? Right? Yeah. Have you ever stood beside the bed of one of uh, someone in pain and prayed for God to help, but felt God was far away? Have you ever felt that God had been hidden way too long in your lives? Have you ever wanted God to do something? Something like tear the heavens open and come down? All of us have felt that way at one time or another. This time of year, perhaps those people are struggling with Christmas. There's a number of churches who do something called blue Christmas services for people who have lost loved ones about this time of year for people who are struggling with faith. I did one down, down south and it was very well attended. Because people want to celebrate Christmas, but they're not in that best of Christmas mood. Sometimes we're like that. Sometimes we struggle at Christmas time. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did a um, service, a, a, a funeral service for Kevin Knudsen, who used to be a member here. And he wanted nothing more than to make it to Christmas, but he didn't. His family, uh, his family came and talked to me and they came, the, the funeral was on Saturday. They came in Thursday night and decorated that funeral home up. There's the one on the west side, Lemark on the west side. They decorated it in Christmas. It, you walk in and it was Christmas. And, and we sang Christmas carols. We even sang, sang uh, Old Lang Syne towards the end. But the thing is, he wanted Christmas. The, the, the family asked people, if you're coming, would you please bring a wrapped toy or gift for a child? There was so many gifts in there. I just was, it was unbelievable. The, the line went down the street almost to Cameron Street. It was incredible. And I had chose to preach on a text Luke chapter 2. Sorry, Chris, I'm walking around too much. Luke chapter 2. You know what that is? The Christmas story. There came a time in the year of Caesar Augustus that blah, 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 blah. Quirinius was, a, was the governor, blah, 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 blah. There was no room in, in the inn, blah, 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 blah. And the child was born. And then we talk about the angels. I preached on that two weeks ago. And it was the absolute, most perfect message to preach. But, but, pastor, how can you preach Christmas at a funeral? Because here's the thing. When we come on, on, on Christmas Eve, when we come to the manger to bow before that baby, that's where it starts. For Kevin, if it, wasn't for, if it wasn't for Christmas Eve, there would be no Palm Sunday. There would be no healing. There would be no raising of the day. If it wasn't for Christmas Eve, there would be no Monday, Thursday. If it wasn't for Christmas Eve, there would be no Good Friday. And if it wasn't for Christmas Eve, there would be no Easter and Resurrection, or and, and, Resurrection and Ascension. 
It all starts there in the manger on Christmas Eve. That service went so well. I had people come up to me. You know, I never know how to take this. That's the best funeral I've ever been to. That's the best. There was three guys who came up separately and said, that's the best Christmas service, uh, sermon I've heard. That's the best funeral sermon I've ever heard. Because that's where it starts. Now, um, the pastor out at St. John's in Fall Creek, Pastor Harris, his grandfather died recently. And one of the charter members, leaders of their congregation, uh, Eddie Geske, passed away. And they called and asked me if I would do the, the, the funeral on Monday. And I said, I will, I will officiate because he's a charter. They can't put it, couldn't put it off until Pastor Harris got back. And so they happened to tell me that the sanctuary was just decorated in Christmas. Guess what text I'm preaching on? I did warn them that my, my style is a little bit different than Pastor Harris's. But guess what I'm preaching on? So as we talk about Christmas, oh wait, we shouldn't be talking about Christmas yet, right? Yes, we should. Yes, we should. I do not care if there's a Christmas carol leaked into the music or not. I, I don't care. Because we should be talking about Christmas all year round. That little baby in a manger. That's a song. Little baby in a manger, I love you. That's what we should be singing and praising all year long. This year, Ash Wednesday falls on, of all days, Valentine's Day. Ew. What are you going to do with that, PJ? There was no greater love than this. The ashes, the forgiveness, the reminder of our sinful condition. There was no more greater love than what Christ did for us. He came down. He emptied himself, as Pastor Lewis said. He emptied himself and he came down and he was born in that stinky barn. We should be singing and, and praising about that all year long. What we do Whatever we do, we need to do joyfully. So, Ash Wednesday, guess what? Joyful. No greater love is there than that. Christmas Eve, joyful. We come and it starts. And we take it all the way through, uh, through until, until um, the... the Ascension. That is what we need to do. We can sing Advent carols and we need to have Advent. It's important to, for us to prepare ourselves. You know, if you have a guest coming, you kind of pick up the house, don't you? If you have a guest coming, you put out all the good china and everything is just so. Christmas is not about presents. Christmas is not about who, gets, who, who do we give the give us biggest gift to. Christmas is not about, you know what, she just gave me that. No. Christmas is about the little baby in a manger. And I want you guys to live through, uh, through Advent preparing yourself, getting your house ready. Put out the fine crystal, put out the fine china, put out the fine silverware. Get yourselves ready. Because in two weeks, we recognize and celebrate Jesus' birth. Two weeks. Didn't it feel like it came fast? Oh my gosh. Two weeks. So over the next two weeks, I want you guys to think about that little baby. I want you guys to think about how you can get yourself, you can get your house cleaned. That you can, you can uh, 
accept him joyfully. Last week, the, the text was, um, make clear the, the, the road, make clear the highway. That's what we need to do, to do for ourselves inside. And so I hope that you all will not only just sing Advent songs here, but I hope you all will listen to Christmas music at home because that is the pathway that leads us to the manger. May God bless that for us all. Amen.